All right, we spent some time talking about fiscal policy. Remember the Keynesian model, the Keynesian algebraic calculations? We talked about spending, government spending, and taxation taxes as ways, in the Keynesian view, to shift the aggregate demand curve so that if we slide into a recession, we could push it back out. And so that if we got into an inflationary time, we could bring that demand curve back down and reduce inflation and continually aim at what? The sharp break in that curve. You could continually aim at full employment with very low inflation. When we present these, these theories and these models, they tend to sound at first pretty intuitively appealing, pretty logical, and pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, no rocket science required. Uh, that's not true. If you believe in Keynesian economics, and certainly there are a lot of people out there today that challenge it, okay, but even if you believe in it and you say, we've got this great system of fiscal policy to manipulate aggregate demand through fiscal policy, okay, well, there's a couple of other problems involved with that. I'm going, to, I'm going to just show you three of them kind of quick here, okay? First problem with, with fiscal policy. So assuming you're a, what? A saltwater economist, a Keynesian, okay? First problem. We have a problem in knowing for sure when we're in a recession. I mean, yeah, we see some people losing jobs, but we don't know if that's just kind of a blip on the screen and it's going to correct itself or just a, some unusual uh, circumstance. How do we know for sure? When we need some fiscal policy, how long does it have to be happening until we say, oh, damn, we're in trouble? Man, unemployment has climbed from 4 to 5 to 8 to 10 percent. Well, at what point there, genius, did you finally figure out we're in a recession? And in all honesty, there is some delay, first in gathering the data and analyzing it and then saying, hey, this isn't just a blip. This is, this is really what's happening. It's being more widespread. It's maybe growing worse. So the first problem we have is what we call a recognition lag. Things have got to get fairly bad and before we can even tell it's bad, okay? If you had a fever, you know, normal temperature 98.6, if you had a temperature of 99, you need to do something about that or is that just a, you know, a little overheated, a little warm? If you say, well, it, it, it'll go away, what about if it's 99.4? You still okay? What if your temperature goes to 99.8? What if your temperature goes over 100? At what point are you going to decide you've got a fever and you've got a problem, you ought to do something about it? And you tend to wait and see and wait and see and wait and see. And so there's an element of that in just trying to read the macro economy. Okay? So we have a, a delay, a lag, just in recognizing that for sure, we have a problem, okay? Second problem. This is the nightmare today, okay? We call it a legislative lag. Now, different textbooks may use different terms or different descriptors of this, but the legislation that is required to implement fiscal policy, remember we talked about that? In the United States, in our, in our federal government, we have two houses. They have the House of Representatives, 435 people. We have the Senate with 100 senators. We have 535 people plus the president. And they're supposed to come together and agree on, oh, we need to cut taxes, or we need to raise taxes, or we need to increase spending, or we need to decrease spending. And so we're trying to get all these folks together to where they can actually make a decision where they can cooperate enough to pass the legislation that may be needed under the Keynesian system, okay? And, and complicated by the fact that what? In the House of Representatives, 435 people, they stand for election every two years. So they may be, may be a lot less focused on the economy and a lot more focused on getting reelected in two years. And so sometimes their attention isn't necessarily on the economic issues, as much as it might be on the issues of getting elected, uh, saying things people like to hear, not doing things people don't like or that would be unpopular, like raising taxes, okay? So when it comes to legislating the, the, the laws we need to change taxes or change spending, in the United States, 
that's always been a little bit of a difficulty because the two political parties have had differing views. But this is 2012. And for the last, I'm going to say, 20 years, the parties have become more and more and more polarized and less and less willing to compromise and negotiate and find solutions. They have taken very hard positions, one more so perhaps than the other, but there is this refusal to even talk. What does that do to the ability to carry out fiscal policy? Well, it pretty well kills it. It pretty well puts it into gridlock. Nothing happens. Always been a problem. A much worse problem today. It's been growing much, much worse over time. And while politicians fight with one another over their inability to agree, the rest of the economy just waits and waits. So one of our problems with fiscal policy, worse now than probably it's ever been, certainly in my lifetime, and I'm older than dirt, the legislative lag, the, let's call it, let's put a word up here, the gridlock. The gridlock in the American Congress, the refusal to work at finding common ground. Huge problem for fiscal policy these days. Third problem, even if you could get them to agree on the legislation, it takes time to pass the legislation and then to put the policies into effect. Now you can do a, a tax cut or a tax increase. You can do that relatively quick if you can get the legislation. But if you decide you're going to increase government spending and government's going to go out and build more roads, build more schools, do research on uh, energy, new energy sources, whatever, by the time the government decides what they're going to do and how much they're going to spend, they then have to go out to the people who are going to provide those services and put their plans out for bid. I want to build a road from A to B, so I ask seven different road companies to give me their estimate on what they would charge so I can take the best bid. Well, how much time does that take to put all that together? And then to go through it and decide which company you're going to give the job to. And that's before you spend a dime. That's before a single dime has gone into the economy, maybe. So while you're trying to, not only you have the legislation, but now you're trying to implement the legislation, time is passing. And if the economy's in trouble, it ain't getting any better. So we have what we're going to call the implementation lag. Put, put short and sweet, government just doesn't move fast because it's constrained by its own rules. You can't build a road from A to B until you specify. Let's take a better example. Suppose the government said, hmm, one of the things we need, we need a million new hammers. And so they say, oh good, pass the legislation, go buy a million new hammers. We need the hammers and it'll be good for the economy, it'll create jobs. Oh, sounds great. But then the, job, the, the government's got to decide exactly what kind of hammers do we need. And so they got to write the specifications. And so the hammer's got to be, I don't know, 14 inches in handle length, right? And it's got to be uh, 7 eighths of an inch around up near the head. And it's got to be 1 inch around at the base. It's got to be made out of fiberglass with a rubber handle. Uh, the, ham the, the head on the, the hammer has got to be exactly this diameter and this thickness made out of these materials. The claw on the hammer, the part that pulls the nails out, it's got to be this long with this angle between the claw. I mean, you try to describe that hammer because you've got to be sure to give that exact specifications to all the hammer makers so they can bid on who's going to get the job. Well, just writing the specifications is a nightmare. And, and that's well before you put it in the hands of the hammer makers. And then they put it all together, and it takes them time to figure out how much can we do these hammers for uh, the lowest price we can charge and still make a reasonable profit or more. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. Okay? That's the implementation lag. So, some serious problems with fiscal policy. Great theory. Nice and clean in the models on the board. But in working reality, it's got some issues particularly government spending. Taxes are a little quicker, but what do we know about taxes? Well, if you decide to raise taxes, what do you think those politicians are going to say? Oh, Lord, if I start being accused of raising taxes, all my people will vote against me. So you've got a real reluctance on the part of Congress to raise taxes, particularly if one party says we should, the other party says, well, if we oppose that, we're going to look like real good people you know, for, our, for our constituents. 
So neither party wants to get out on the limb and say we need to raise taxes. The only way they can do that is if they all do it together. Then we can hate all of them, you know, but at least they're all together on it. You can't say, well, since the Democrats want to raise taxes, or since the Republicans want to raise taxes. No, if they're all trying to do it, man, maybe, maybe that's a legitimate approach. But that's not happening. All right.